So I'm gonna be sharing with you how I like to do validation in a way where I get to share that between my front end and my back end so I can have one place where I put out the logic and the rules for the validation and I'm not having to repeat myself. Now the validation library that I like to use is called Yup and how it works is the following. You basically define an object or whatever you're trying to model or that you want to validate. In my case, 90% of the time I'm wanting to validate an object, but you could also validate, say, an array. Um, but this example here is an object, and I'm basically specifying, so I say yup.object.shape, and this is where I'm defining the other fields that are in the object. So for example here, I have a title, and then this is where I specify um, all the different things that this particular field validation applied to that field as well. So for example here I say it's a string and you'll notice in yup what you do is you say yup and then you chain all the different attributes. So a minimum of five characters, max of 30, it's a required field. I said pages um, is another place where it's a number. It has to be an integer, a positive integer. It's also a required field and then here I have a field that's a string and is nullable. Um, so this is basically how you define your validation in Yup is you'll create these different objects which are called schemas um, and you'll define how they should be. Now with these rules you can also specify messages as well. So if you want a custom message um, for specific rules like title is too long you can do that and Yup also comes with default messages as well so you can choose it. Um, the default or you can type your own and I really recommend if you want to get into Yup, there's a whole bunch of other fields I can't cover them all um, the best thing is just go to the readme and look at the different ways you can do that so we have Yup, and you can see there's a few different data types mixed string number boolean arrays and the different ways that you can actually represent them in a schema but once you have this schema, the gist of it is you want to be able to share this validation code between your server and your React application or whatever front end you're using. So the way I usually do this is with a Yarn workspace. I'm not going to get into how to actually set up a Yarn workspace in this video. If you're interested in doing that, I'll have a link below on how you can do that. But basically, I have a common package where I will put all my validation. And then I can import this validation or import this schema in both my server and my website. So what does it actually look like to use this validation in GraphQL on my server and then also in React? So that's what we're going to look at next. So this is what it usually looks like when I'm using it in GraphQL. So here I have a resolver called Create Book. And I'll usually have something like this. Now before I get into the yup part, let's just take a look at the definition. So my create book right here has a title, pages, author, you can see string and string. And you notice this is basically matching my schema, what I had defined over here. But now we have a few extra rules associated to it, not just the data type. Uh, I also like to create a type that's like an error type. I called it field error, um, but you can call this other things as well. The main thing is it's going to have the field associated with the error and then a message. So for example, the title is too long um, or the pages is too large or whatever. Um, and then I'll usually return the errors from my resolvers and then have that's a, the input. All right, so I'll usually do this. So um, you can use uh, it. So this is my schema, right, that I'm importing from the common package, this here. And I was going to say, you can either use this uh, synchronously or asynchronous. So you can say validate.sync on that schema, or you can say um, await and use async and await and it'll return a promise. But to notice, so I'm saying schema.validate, and then I pass in the data that I want to validate. So this is the data coming in to the server. Um, and here I said, this is a property that I'd recommend adding. Um, it says abort early. And what that does is I'm setting it to false, which means it's actually going to tell me all the errors that is wrong with this, not just stop when it has reached one thing that is wrong. So what I mean by that is if I actually try calling this uh, mutation and I have a few things that are wrong, I'm going to get all of them back. So instead of just throwing one error back, it's giving me three. So the title is needs to be at least five characters, and it's required, and pages needs to be positive. So all those things need to be true um, to be for this to be a valid thing. And how I go about doing this is the uh, yup will throw an error. So I try catch it, and the error I will loop through the 
there's an inner property on the error where you can loop through all the errors and get the path and message and I validate that into this basically. Um, so that is what I do for on the server side to send back errors with yup is I'll create the schema, I'll call validate on the data that is coming in um, and then I will throw errors like this and I'll format the errors back like that and I'll just return it in my resolver like that. Now it's good to note this is where you have to put validation. You have to put validation on your server. Um, and whether that is with Yup or with uh, your database or using a different library, um, it's important to put it here. And the client side, which I'm about to show, is pretty much optional. So if you put validation on the client side, which is I'm about to show you in React, this is mostly for your users to make it easy for them to uh, you know see the errors and fix them without making a request to the server. This actually doesn't validate anything. Um, but because because people can get around it um, and they can send requests without using your front end so it's very important to add the validation on the server side and not just on the client side so if you had to choose to put in just one location put it there but this I usually will end up putting it putting it in both places so again here I am importing it from my common package here and the way I like to use validation on react is with formic and it's very easy You'll notice I'm not even having to call validate. I just pass it in to Formic. My validation schema is this create book schema. And Formic will actually validate for it for me. So the keys of my Formic form will match up with the validation schema. So title, page is author. Um, and then I can get validation in my React app like so. So here I can type some letters and I can get out. And you'll notice that I have not typed five letters and it's going to be mad at me and I can't submit until I do that. And so I'm not able to submit a form until this happens, so I'm, I'm not basically wasting, like I could send this request to the server and get the same information, um, but it's saving the user keystrokes as they're typing. You can see exactly when um, the errors uh, has been fixed and when it hasn't been fixed, when there's still an error. So it's nice, just like a UI thing on the client side to add this validation, um, but it's kind of an optional thing. You can just have it on the server side. But uh, yeah, that is how I do it. So I will put Yup in a common package where I can import it and I'll create a schema like this and then I will use it in React usually with Formic and I'll use it in GraphQL like this. Now it's good to note, uh, I recently learned about this that Yup is not the smallest uh, package for validation. So if you care about bundle size, uh, you may want to consider other libraries. So this is the size of it. And if you compare this to some other alternatives, you can get much smaller validation libraries. Uh, the one that was interesting, that looked interesting to me, was a super strict one. So that is one I'll be trying out in the future to see if I like it better than Yup. Um, but in the time being, I'm using Yup and pretty happy with the way I'm doing it and not having to re redo the same logic and being able to share that schema.